Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Podemski and I'm the Director of Future History and I'm sitting here with Serene Fox and Chris Nargang, our hosts of this uh, television series that follows these guys as they trek across Ontario and Quebec, Quebec um, discovering who, who and what's being done on the front lines of reclamation, rematriation, and of course um, diving into your own journeys of identity yeah. and mm. it's an interesting journey definitely I think for all of us we've we've learned so much in this in this uh, on the road and in this conversation about identity and have been empowered so much by the people we've met and sometimes it's important just to be reminded of what's happening in your community like face to face because it's easy to get lost in the in the fight or in the struggle and feel like very isolated so that was I felt for me a really great experience um, to be surrounded by you guys and all the incredible people we met mm -hmm. and today's episode was on museums and uh, well that big conversation around <laughs> uh, you know artifacts and museums and of course Chris being an archaeologist had some interesting things to say and I'll give it to you guys to tell us you know some anecdotes from the road what happened in the episode and this was an interesting issue for you two. Mm -hmm. I think this is one of the ones where we actually we had an ar maybe had a real argument. Yeah, we kind of did. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we did. Tell me about that. Tell me about that. <laughs> Tell me about our argument. Tell me about our argument. <laughs> well, from my perspective, I was, um, you know, like First Nations and Indigenous people do not like archaeologists. Um, they don't like our stuff being taken out of the ground. They don't like it being put on display. And everything like that is understandable. And that's how it used to be. Um, they don't like the bones being taken out of the ground and kept in museums, which they don't do anymore. Um, I've worked hard to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, I feel, this is just my personal opinion, it's right, uh, that the only way to, to protect these things now, uh, a lot of it's happening because of development. And the issue with artifacts and archaeology is the fact that you cannot see it until you find it. And nine times out of ten, if not ten times out of ten, unless you're searching, uh, it's found by a bulldozer or it's found by somebody scraping the ground to put in a line. or And then at that time, archaeology kicks in. Uh, it's now the law. And they go in, they investigate, and they, they do the site. They, they have to take everything out of the ground. Uh, unless it's burials, um, we try very, very hard now to leave them in place, and in situ, they call it, and not remove them from where they were, because there's a reason for them being where they are, and a special reason for that. So we fought hard for that. Um, but I've, also, I've seen it come out of the ground, and protected by the university, studied, and now there's actually a new program working with indigenous people um, where they're going to be actually looking at the pottery designs and, and trying to find um, uh, some kind of sequence and patterns for families and things like that. So some good things coming like that. Um, I don't like it to be disturbed, but at the same time it also shows that we were here mm -hmm. and it tells us who was here and what time periods and things like that. And uh, my mom says it should just stay in the ground. Why do you bother with that stuff? But uh, I think it's uh, every time that fi we find something, I've always found, to me, that it shows that our people were here, mm -hmm. uh, and just for how long. And as I've been following it, um, they found one down in the States now, which is pretty much verified by, uh, by science that it's uh, 130 to 150,000 years old. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's groundbreaking, uh, because everybody always says, well, you guys just got here like 10, 15,000 years ago, so you're just newcomers as well. Um, something like that shows that um, it kind of changes the, the history of everything. When the migration out of Africa is 70,000 years ago, and you have a site in California that I think it's California, uh, is 150,000 years ago with tools and mm -hmm. broken bones and people actually working on mastodons or mammoth, whatever they had there. It shows that there was people here a lot longer than, than we ever assumed, they ever assumed, which our stories and our traditional stories to say we were always here. Uh, the Medeon that I speak with have always said we were always here. Mm -hmm. So it kind of verifies and you know and, and it's not just people saying well yeah you guys are just Europeans as well. Yeah. So and that was always you know for, for me for the artifacts and the archaeology the proof was one I was trying to find out who I was but on the other side of it it was to prove that you know we were here and that we were here a very very long time a lot longer than people thought and that we were justified in our beliefs. I think that's why it's so important to actually get to interact with someone who is practicing something that you might have an opinion about because I think it's your passion and your fire um, 
around archaeology that has allowed me to sort of look at it from a different perspective. And I think, of course, I have some really hard lines about this. But I realize that my hard opinions are because I have never been in a position where I had to prove that I exist. Yeah. Because I was raised in a way where I believe that we always exist. And I have the benefit of believing that my original instructions, our original instructions are science. And so it's been really beautiful for me as I grow up now to see science proving, science proving that our original instructions and our creation stories are true. Um, I've never had to ask what the Milky Way was. I never had to know what that was in the galaxy because I know that the Milky Way is the first time the creator's thoughts actually reached out into the sky. I've never had to ask why it is that the waters move this way because I know that the twinness of life means that there is still water and there are rapids. Um, and I think that respecting your opinion on archaeology is also part of understanding that you can use science to prove indigenous knowledge and you can use indigenous knowledge to prove science. And I think as we move forward, I hope um, that museums will start to soften their grasp on us because the only reason that we've had to hold on so tight to artifacts is because for so long people have been trying to exterminate yeah. native people. And I say exterminate for a very specific reason. Yeah. They held on to our things because they intended for us to not be here. Yeah. And so as long as that is the reason for museums to exist, I cannot stand behind that. But what I've seen, even if you look at the, you know, I, I, I love the work that Manitoba Mucklucks is doing. And I, you know, if you ask anyone on that team, you can, they'll tell you I fought hard to understand what was going on at the bottom. And what I've understood is that from the beaters, which is the same thing as an archaeologist yeah. teaching me about these, and then a beater teaching me, I would have never known those patterns. I would have never known that old school pucker. I would have never known my original kind of moccasin if I was not able to go into those archives and see them. Mm -hmm. And so there is always two sides yeah. to the story. And I think that's uh, one of the great things about um, this journey is getting to hear both of your sides because you both are very opinionated <laughs> no. and no. have very different <laughs> opinions. And, you know, I, I definitely, uh, I, I definitely see both perspectives mm -hmm. and honor both of your your perspectives for sure. And I know that there's many more perspectives out there. Um, so if any of you have anything to contribute to the conversation about this particular episode or any other episodes that you've seen of Future History, you can email us a video <laughs> and we can put it into our Talking Stick digital series. Um, and the address is Future History. Talking, Talking stick, stick at futurehistorytv.ca and keep following us. Keep checking us out on, uh, on TV, on APTN, and keep coming back and watching our little banter, mm -hmm. banter sessions after the episode. You're going to have to make us episodes. a talking stick, too. I could do that. Yeah, I think we're going to need one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. See you later, guys. Tune in next time for the next episode of Future History. Bye. Bye, Rich.